few years ago, one very well-respected pilot from the United States was reviewing the Scout. After his test flight, we were discussing certain behavior of the paramotor, and I found out that he was confusing this behavior with torque. But it was not the torque to blame, it was the gyroscopic effect. This is really difficult to observe and even more difficult to explain. So wish me luck to make it clear in this lecture. This is part 17 of the insights into paramotor geometry. We have a really tough topic today, gyroscopic effect on paramotors. Let's go back to school. So let's have a closer look on this really weird behavior of the paramotor. Now you can clearly see the rotation of the paramotor relative to the glider. There is nothing wrong with the paramotor, there is nothing wrong with the pilot, this is pure physics. Let's have a look on another video with Alex Mateos flying his paramotor. You clearly see the rotation of the paramotor relative to the trailing edge of the glider. This behavior is caused by the gyroscopic effect. You already know this picture from my previous lecture. If you have a rapidly rotating object, it wants to remain stable in its same position. But there is a really weird behavior with every rotating object. Once you apply force on this object, it will move in a completely different direction. One of the best demonstrations of this effect was performed by Professor Walter Lewin from MIT. Let's have a closer look. What you see on this video is a rapidly spinning wheel that is hang only on one side and instead of falling over, it starts to rotate around the vertical axis. Now here I have my little drawing. So we have the wheel spinning and the gravity applies force this way on the top and in the opposite way on the bottom, but Due to the gyroscopic effect, the, uh, the wheel will not fall over, but it will start to turn in this direction. Now, exactly the same happens uh, when you add full power on the paramotor. During constant level flight, the paramotor is suspended and it's in a very stable way. But when you add full throttle, the whole paramotor will lean backwards, which is in fact the same as you would apply force to this side, to the back, and on the bottom of the prop to the front. And the paramotor will have a tendency to rotate around the vertical axis, just as we have seen on the previous videos of pilots flying their paramotors. While you clearly see from the video uh, how it works, it's really non-intuitive to understand. I will do my best to explain. Let's start with linear motion first. Assume we have some object, let's say a ball, moving this direction. Now at this very moment, I will apply some force from the side. And what will happen? The ball will change its direction and instead of moving in a straight line, it will divert in this direction. Now let's turn the linear motion of the ball to rotational motion of the propeller. Now imagine the tip of the propeller being our ball that keeps on spinning in circles. But once the ball is at the bottom of the cage and you apply force from the back, it will change the direction of the ball bit this way, as as it continues to spin in circles, it effectively turns the whole paramotor, the whole propeller to the side. Now, this is obviously an extremely simplified explanation. If you like it in a more scientific way, read the description below. I do have some useful links for you. So let's do a quick summary. Now let's assume a level flight at constant RPM at the beginning. Now you add full power for a climb out or a slalom type turn. What happens? It will pitch the paramotor upwards and the gyroscopic effect will turn the pilot and the paramotor to the side. Now as the paramotor is pointing sideways, the thrust line 
is pushing you out of the vertical position and the glider will turn as both the gyroscopic effect and the torque effect are causing the glider to turn to the same direction it is very easy to confuse these two and this was exactly what happened to this respected pilot few years ago when he was testing the scout he was looking into the glider adding full throttle and observing how much the angle between his paramotor and the glider changed he was in fact observing the gyroscopic effect not the torque so now what you can do about it uh, not much get a lighter prop uh, that obviously will reduce the gyroscopic effect this is in fact the reason why powerful engines have more gyroscopic effect than a low power engine simply because powerful engines need a heavier and larger prop and larger blades or more blades so the second thing you can do about it is get used to it live with it but it's in fact nothing horrible most pilots don't even notice this effect because they don't fly on and off throttle very very often and most of their flights are easy cruising flights where you don't observe this situation at all I'm lucky I'm over it. In the next few videos, I want to cover the geometry of the main frame, of the main body that you have on your back. There are huge differences between paramotors. It does influence your safety and it does influence your speed of flight. So stay tuned, stay with us, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, thanks for sharing and see you soon.